As it winds its way from the Rocky Mountains to the Gulf of Mexico, the Rio Grande marks where Texas ends and Mexico begins. The United States' southern border since 1848, for much of its 2,000 kilometer stretch, the river is the only physical barrier between the two countries. Less than 160 kilometers of the Rio Grande border have any form of fence, but for many residents here, that suits them just fine. At Riverbend Golf Course, close to Brownsville and the river's delta, President Trump's proposed border wall would leave the retirement community in a no man's land, cutting them off between the river and the fence. It would hurt it bad. Uh, the golf course would no longer exist because the wall would cut the golf course in half. Hey, how are you guys doing? Yet this conservative-leaning community voted heavily for Donald Trump in November of 2016. I personally held a um, Let's Make America Great Again inaugural campfire here, and it was very well attended. And people were very happy at the time. And, you know, I, I think people in this park are generally very conservative. And, you know, they, they want to see things taken care of. They want America to be great again. And, you know, I think we want our borders secure. Surprisingly, though it would change their community, Many here are in favor of the U.S. president's wall. We've all had discussions about it and stuff. And we, we feel pretty comfortable that the wall is going to go up. It would really hurt the community. But something needs to be done, you know, to stop the inflow of, of illegal people. It doesn't matter where the wall is. The river is the boundary. We're still in the United States. It just may take us a little bit longer to go to the grocery store or to have emergency services come in here and that would be a real bad thing. Um, but we're still in the United States. For the residents of South Texas, illegal immigration is a serious concern. So as you can see here at the southern reaches of the Rio Grande, on the other side of the river, the southern bank, that is Tamaulipas State, considered one of the most dangerous places in Mexico. And just a stone's throw from Tamaulipas State, here you find us in Texas, just a kilometer from a small town named Roma, right on the Texas border. But as you can see, there's absolutely no border wall here and very minimal border patrol protection. So for people who are trying to get into the United States from Mexico, if you know where you're going, it's not actually that difficult. Last year, 271,000 apprehensions were made on the US-Mexico border. 69% of those were made in the Rio Grande Valley. Illegal immigration here is a daily problem, and towns like McAllen, Brownsville and Laredo, despite their large Latino community bases, voted heavily in favor of Donald Trump. Elise Peterson runs Texas Border Tours in Progreso, a company offering horseback riding, off-road vehicles and rafting on and around the Rio Grande. She says the sight of migrants crossing the river can be a thrill, although she leaves the citizens' arrest duties to the Border Patrol. That we got was just the crossing right down there of like the 30, 40 people going across. Broad daylight, but I mean it's it's all throughout the border towns here, McAllen, Brownsville, Remy, wherever you go, it's a border town, you're gonna to have a lot of crossings. Elise says that since Trump came into office, business has boomed, with many clients coming only to see the wall and the current security arrangements along the border. A lot of people don't even know that we even have a wall right now. I mean, a lot of people have wanted to come down here just because now they want to see it. They want to see what's already here and maybe what Trump is wanting to do. I think it might be a good little change, in all honesty, just to maybe mix it up a little bit. Yet, aside from the daily illegal crossings, Elise has personal reasons for wanting to see the wall extended. Last year, her 17-year-old cousin overdosed on heroin. 
She's one of millions affected by the ongoing opiate epidemic in the United States. People are OD ODing all the time up there right now. So, and they're coming from here. I mean, they're, they're mainly coming from here. Drugs are the main thing for me. I hate the drugs, I want them gone, I don't want them here. They're killing too many kids. Too many kids. Elise is one of many in the Rio Grande Valley who want to see the wall go up. Who loves the idea of the wall? But turning Trump's campaign promise into reality will take more than the $25 billion the president is requesting from Congress. Personally, I don't know how, there, how a wall will go end to end, <laughs> but each side all along the border, just because there's a lot of places where it's almost difficult to have a wall. It's a big change. It's not like some little change here. It's like a life-changing thing for some people. I mean, the wall's gonna be built through people's properties and they're like, I don't want a wall through my property. Yeah. Well, guess what? Now it's gonna be cut halfway, so. I think there's enough people that are wanting the wall that it will get done. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. The Rio Grande Valley is geographically different to the western end of the border in California, where long stretches of wall currently bisect the Sonora Desert. A flood valley of lakes, high cliffs and a snaking river delta, the Texas border region is not conducive to large-scale construction, and even President Trump, a renowned builder himself, admits you can't put a wall through a river. 1520 is a normal group. Um, the most I've caught by myself was 54. Chris Cabrera is a lifelong Border Patrol agent, and while he supports the construction of a wall, he says in some areas, other systems may be more effective. You know, I don't know if you could do a complete border wall. Um, and if you did, there's, there's problems with that on our side, that you have areas out in, in West Texas where, you know, you're at a 30, 40 foot bluff and then putting 30 feet on top of that just doesn't really make sense. So I, I think different areas are gonna call for different means. Um, all areas need something, whether it's an actual wall or whether it's uh, a technology-based system with, with ground sensors, cameras, um, surveillance types, you know, either way, you're covering the area just in a different manner. Yet President Trump continues to insist on the construction, describing the one and a half billion so far approved by Congress as a down payment on the completed project. Seen as either sabre-rattling or an earnest attempt to get his border wall construction underway, six wall prototypes now stand at the western end of the border, south of San Diego. Designed by private companies pitching the White House for the lucrative business, it may also mean work for Mexico. And such a wide-ranging construction job would almost certainly rely upon Mexican immigrant labour for its completion. Alberto Aguilar is a migration analyst and says while a wall may be built, its anti-immigration purposes are secondary to its symbolic meaning. El muro lo único para lo que sirve es para que Donald Trump mantenga vivas sus bases más primitivas de soporte a su voto de la reelección. Para todo lo demás es fatal, es fatal para los Estados Unidos. Es el primero es que no soluciona nada, porque los muros no son capaces de parar la dinámica de la sociedad. ¿Cómo podemos frenar el mar? ¿Le vamos a poner diques? ¿Alguna vez los diques han frenado el mar? Nunca. He says that rather than a barrier, a deeper understanding of migration is essential. Los migrantes ilegales, como les dicen los indocumentados, pagan eh, más de 11 mil millones de dólares de impuestos, 11.74 miles de millones de dólares. Son superiores a lo que paga el 1% más rico de los Estados Unidos. El 1% más rico de los Estados Unidos paga menos de 6 mil millones de dólares de impuestos. Entonces, ¿dónde está el problema? In la cabeza. Yet following last year's 17-year low in illegal immigration along the Mexican border, which was named the Trump effect, many are keen to see the president's rhetoric turned into tangible concrete. He got in their heads. Ever since he became president, the crossings have gone down. 
right now there's a lot of pros going towards it right now so we'll see what happens i'll see it when i believe it yeah all right now everything is talked there are steps going through it but something can always stop it right there at the end yet trump's wall is already under construction in early april at the santa teresa crossing in western texas 30 kilometers of construction began it's a region facing Juarez City in Mexico, where illegal immigrant and narco-trafficking crossings are commonplace. At the eastern end of the state, migrants' numbers are once again climbing rapidly. Oh yes, uh, I see them. I mean, they used to come by the hordes. I mean, uh, 10, 15 at a time sometimes. You know, this is what we call... Erasmo Rosales lives 50 meters from the Rio Grande in an area where no wall exists. Despite the daily sightings, he is one of a minority here we spoke to who don't support a wall. The people that really want to get across, they're going to get across one way or another. OK, so you may stop the, the criminals, uh, criminal element, but you're also stopping a lot of other innocent people who might have a chance over here. And it's, this is supposed to be a country of uh, opportunity. As the Trump effect appears to be wearing off, migrant numbers are once again surging. The city of Reynosa, which faces McAllen, Texas, across the narrow strait of the Rio Grande, is one of the most dangerous towns in North America. Sister Edith Garrido runs the town's only migrant shelter, a building with security arrangements similar to a prison. Antes los migrantes podían pasar, de alguna manera pasaban a Estados Unidos y no eran eh, objeto de secuestro, de extorsión y, y de extorsión también para sus familias porque al no pasarlos empiezan a llamar a sus familias porque ya los tienen ya no como migrantes sino como secuestrados. Los llevan a casas de seguridad donde les cobran de 6 mil a 10 mil dólares por dejarlos libres y en realidad no sabemos si los dejan libres porque pues ahí perdemos la pista, ya no sabemos si realmente los sueltan o qué pasa con ellos. Sister Edith sees the majority of her charges returning from the United States after failed crossing attempts. She told us that she believes the US authorities are also a large part of the problem. Lo que me inquieta mucho es ver la situación de los migrantes cuando son este, uh, detenidos por la migración en Estados Unidos que los llevan a las casas de detención y ahí veo que ellos sufren mucho porque los ponen en, las, en una detención que es muy fría, donde ellos se impresionan mucho porque no tienen un lugar adecuado, duermen en el suelo, tienen frío, muchas veces van mojados, van espinados, van enfermos y no les dan la atención adecuada. Pocos son los que se deciden otra vez a regresar. Después de haber pasado todo lo que sufrieron en su intento, pocos son los que intentan regresar otra vez. José Francisco was one such migrant. He slipped past the Border Patrol and crossed undetected into Texas. But it was on the next stage of his journey, on his way to Dallas, when he was caught. Eh, agente de inmigración. Sí, un agente de inmigración. Bueno, es que pararon el autobús, hicieron el chequeo y, y pues se dieron cuenta que no, que, que, no era, que no era legal, aproximadamente cuatro días. La verdad te tratan muy mal, ¿eh? muy mal en el sentido de que te tienen como animal, parece como que si fuéramos borregos, no sé. José says that now he'll head back to his family in central Mexico rather than attempting the crossing again. Para tener un, un mejor nivel de vida, la verdad aquí en México no hay muchas oportunidades, entonces, pues regresar a mi, a mi lugar de origen, eso es lo que voy a hacer, regresar a mi lugar de origen y pues por el momento no tengo pensado en, en volver a regresar o volver a intentar cruzar. Sí, la verdad mucha gente se está, se está desalentando, no hace más intentos porque son intentos en balde, o sea, saben que, que no van a pasar, y, pues no hay de otra. Vámonos a nuestro lugar de origen. Despite the money he lost and the ordeal he went through at the hands of the American authorities, he nevertheless says he has no regrets. La verdad, la verdad, pues no, no, 
no, no me gusta ese, no me gusta mucho ese, ese tipo de, de cultura. ¿Por qué? Porque no ves gente caminando, eh, todos salen prácticamente en sus vehículos, no ves gente, salvo en centros comerciales o en tiendas. Es el único lugar donde puedes ver a la gente, pero en las calles, avenidas, no hay nada de gente, no hay nada de gente. Yo sí crucé, prácticamente yo sí disfruté, pues, tres, cuatro días en Estados Unidos.